Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about the differences between bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs. So first let's talk about bactericidal. Bactericidal refers to an antibiotic that actually kills the bacteria. Uh, and you can tell that by this root here, cidal, um, think like homicide, murder, so it's for killing, killing the bacteria specifically without help from the patient's immune system. So it does not require the patient's immune system to do anything, it can kill the bacteria by itself. So that's bactericidal. Examples of bactericidal drugs include beta-lactam drugs like penicillin, as well as vancomycin, another, uh, another kind of common antibiotic. Now, upon removal, meaning that when the patient stops taking the bactericidal drug, there will be no more growth. And that's because as long as they took it for a long enough period of time, all of the bacteria that it was targeting should have died, and so there should not be any reestablishment of infection. So that's bactericidal. Now we'll talk about bacteriostatic. This is where the antibiotic prevents the multiplication or the growth of the bacteria. And the goal here is that bacteriostatic drugs, they prevent the bacteria from being able to multiply and divide and become more numerous. And this allows the patient's immune system to kill the bacteria. So the bacteriostatic drugs just kind of slow things down, um, depress this multiplication process in order for the immune system to get ahead of the infection and take care of it. Examples of bacteriostatic drugs include chloramphenicol and tetracycline. And upon removal, if there are still bacteria around that have not been taken care of by the immune system, if a bacteriostatic drug is removed, then growth can resume. Let's take a look up here at this graph just for an example of this. On the y-axis, we have the number of cells. Um, it's a logarithmic scale. On the x-axis, we have time. And what I've drawn here is this um, dark solid line is representing a bacteriostatic drug, whereas the dashed line is representing a bactericidal drug. And so what this shows is if you have bacteria that you inoculate into a test tube of growth media, they will begin to increase in number. And then if you add a drug, if it's a bacteriostatic drug, that will prevent multiplication of the bacteria without killing them. If it's a bactericidal drug, it will actually kill them, causing the bacterial numbers to fall down. Then, if in the test tube you remove the drug, if it was a bactericidal drug, there would be no additional growth. All the bacteria are dead. If it is a bacteriostatic drug, growth can then resume for that bacteria. So this is sort of um, a, a hypothetical example in a test tube without the patient's immune system. When actually being used, these different drugs to treat patients, um, their immune system is also a major player in the process. Let's also talk about some similar classes of drugs for treating other kinds of pathogens. So for example, there are different kinds of fungicidal drugs and fungistatic drugs used for treating fungi. And again, fungicidal kills the fungal cells. Fungistatic just um, prevents their growth so that the immune system can take care of the problem. There's also for treating parasites, we have parasiticidal versus parasitostatic. Again, kills the parasite, prevents the parasite from multiplying. And then for treating viruses, Again, there are some antiviral medications that are virucidal, actually um, sort of terminate the virus, make it um, completely unfunctional, even if it were removed. And then virostatic, something that just prevents the replication of the viruses so that the immune system can come in and take care of the rest. Now, there are some caveats, meaning that it's not always this cut and dry. 
we can't always say, well, all of these drugs are bacteriostatic and all of these drugs are bactericidal. And that's because of a few things. So some drugs are actually bacteriostatic at lower concentrations, but if they are applied in a high enough concentration, then they're bactericidal. So the concentration at which the drug is administered matters. Also, some drugs are bacteriostatic against certain species, but bactericidal against others. And that has to do with different bacteria having different kinds of defenses to certain uh, antibiotics. And so some of these drugs are only bacteriostatic in some species, but can outright kill other species of bacteria. Also, and I think this is pretty cool, some bacteriostatic drugs are bactericidal when they're administered together. This is an example of synergism. So it's a synergistic effect, meaning that when you take a drug like um, sulfamethoxazole and combine it with trimethoprim, maybe these are both bacteriostatic if they're used separately, but when they're applied together, that kind of one-two punch is actually bactericidal enough to kill the bacteria cells. If you're interested in learning a little bit more, I have a video on bacterial growth curve and binary fission that will tell you about how bacteria grow and multiply. If you're interested also in the topic of antibiotic resistance, how some bacteria have become resistant to many of our frontline antibiotics, and you can also check out my video on antibiotic resistant bacteria. That's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.